We have a real problem in identifying the Sea Peoples. We're pretty sure that the Peleset of the Sea Peoples are the Philistines mentioned in the Bible. For over 3,000 years, one mystery has haunted the pages of history. Who were the Sea Peoples? They appeared suddenly out of nowhere around 1200 BC, like ghosts from the ocean. He's reporting that his city, his town, is surrounded by ships. It says, the enemy ships are already here. They've set fire to my towns and have done very great damage in the country. Bringing fire and destruction to some of the greatest empires of the ancient world, Egypt, the Hittites, the Mycenaeans, they left behind no cities, no written language, no clear origin, just destruction and silence. But now, scientists have finally uncovered something that could rewrite everything we thought we knew about these legendary invaders. Because recent DNA evidence, pulled from skeletons buried near the Mediterranean coast, suggests something impossible. The Sea Peoples might not have been a single race at all. They might have been a coalition of civilizations, or something much stranger. And the truth scientists uncovered about their DNA is something that no historian was prepared for. The fall that no one could explain to understand why this discovery is so shocking. We have to go back to the end of the Bronze Age, a time of powerful kingdoms, advanced trade routes, and global connections stretching from Greece to Egypt to Mesopotamia. Then, around 1200 BC, everything collapsed. Entire cities were burned to the ground. Palaces that had stood for centuries were reduced to rubble. Writing systems disappeared populations scattered. Within just a few decades, the ancient world fell into darkness. For centuries, historians searched for answers. Earthquakes, drought, rebellion. None of them explained the scale of destruction. Then ancient Egyptian records mentioned mysterious invaders, those who came from the sea. They were described as fearless warriors with strange weapons arriving in ships unlike any seen before. Pharaoh Ramses III fought them in a massive sea battle and claimed victory, but even Egypt barely survived the onslaught. He called them the Sea Peoples, and from that moment on, they became one of history's greatest enigmas. The DNA discovery. Fast forward to the present day, a team of archaeologists and geneticists uncovered ancient graves along the coastlines of Israel, Cyprus, and southern Turkey all regions where the Sea Peoples were said to have landed. Inside those graves were remains of men, women, and children buried with weapons, ornaments, and pottery of mixed styles. Not purely local, but not foreign either. When scientists extracted and sequenced their DNA, they expected to find a familiar story. Migrants from Greece, maybe Italy, or nearby islands. But what they found didn't fit any known pattern. The genetic markers revealed something shocking. These people carried a mixture of ancestries spanning the entire Mediterranean, from Sardinia to Anatolia, from the Aegean to North Africa. It was as if multiple civilizations had merged into one, forming a completely new genetic identity almost overnight. This wasn't a tribe, it was a movement, a people without a homeland, the genetic, Data painted a picture far stranger than historians imagined. The Sea Peoples didn't come from one homeland. They came from many. They weren't conquerors in the usual sense. They were refugees, warriors, wanderers, and survivors of collapsing empires. As droughts and wars devastated the Bronze Age world, populations fled their homelands, forming fleets and alliances just to survive. Out of this chaos emerged a hybrid civilization, people with shared desperation, shared strength, and a shared goal, survival at any cost. But there was something even stranger about their DNA. Among the samples, scientists found a small percentage of genetic markers that don't clearly match any known ancient population. These markers were not local to the Mediterranean, nor from the Middle East, nor from Europe. They appeared anomalous, as if belonging to a lost branch of humanity, or perhaps an isolated population 
that vanished long before written history. That single clue has shaken the world of archaeology. Who were they really? The Forbidden Theory Some researchers now believe that the Sea Peoples weren't just displaced nations, they might have been the inheritors of an even older civilization, one that existed before the Great Flood myths, before Egypt, before Sumer, before recorded time. According to this controversial view, these people may have carried remnants of a forgotten maritime culture, possibly survivors from regions that are now underwater, wiped out by the sea level rise at the end of the Ice Age. If true, this would mean that the Sea Peoples were not simply destroyers of civilizations, they were the last echoes of one, a culture that once thrived along ancient coastlines, now buried beneath the ocean. Their ships, technologies, and warfare tactics would have seemed alien to Bronze Age kingdoms, not because they were new, but because they were ancient. And their strange, mixed DNA? It could be the genetic fingerprint of that vanished world. The Egyptian records revisited Egyptian records describe the Sea Peoples in extraordinary detail. They fought in tight formations, used advanced weaponry, and sailed massive ships capable of ramming and boarding. They also brought their families, women and children, suggesting they weren't raiders but migrants, carrying entire societies with them. Ramses III's temple reliefs show them wearing feathered headdresses with different styles of armor and facial features, evidence of multiple ethnic groups united under a single cause. What if that unity wasn't random? What if it was orchestrated, guided by knowledge older than any empire, passed down from a forgotten maritime priesthood? That would explain how the Sea Peoples coordinated attacks across thousands of miles, hitting multiple kingdoms almost simultaneously. No ordinary alliance could achieve that level of strategy and synchronization unless they shared something deeper, an ancient system of knowledge, navigation, or purpose that bound them together. The DNA puzzle deepens. When geneticists compared the Sea People's DNA to modern populations, they found strange connections to regions far beyond the Mediterranean, faint links to the Caucasus, even Central Asia. This means that their origins might stretch much farther east than anyone imagined. It's possible that as global climate shifts destroyed coastal settlements, migrating groups from different corners of the ancient world began converging in the Mediterranean, creating what could have been the first true global culture in history, one that existed briefly and then vanished without a trace. What terrified scientists, but the discovery that truly unsettled scientists wasn't about geography, it was about time, because when they studied the DNA degradation rates, a few samples appeared older than the archaeological layers they were buried in. In simple terms, this means the remains seem to predate the sites themselves by several hundred years. Either the skeletons were reburied intentionally, or they were remains of people who had traveled vast distances carrying genetic lineages that had already gone extinct elsewhere. Some experts quietly admitted that the Sea People's DNA doesn't fully match any known human population of the Bronze Age. In other words, part of their ancestry seems to come from a people that shouldn't exist, the legacy that survived. Despite the mystery, one thing is clear. After the chaos of the Sea People's invasions, a new world emerged. The old empires were gone, but new cultures rose from the ashes the Phoenicians, the early Greeks, the Israelites. And strangely, traces of the Sea People's DNA appear in all of them. They didn't disappear completely. They became the ancestors of the Mediterranean world as we know it. Their ships influenced later naval designs. Their trade routes became the foundations of later economies. Their myths of gods from the sea, of great floods and lost homelands, became part of humanity's collective memory. Perhaps that's why so many ancient cultures share similar legends of seaborne gods and drowned civilizations. They weren't just stories, they were memories. 
The forgotten warning one, chilling interpretation of the Sea People's arrival is that they weren't invaders at all, but messengers. If they came from regions destroyed by climate disaster or war, they may have been warning other civilizations of what was coming. But humanity, as always, met chaos with fear. The Silent Connection to Atlantis There's one final theory that continues to spark debate, one that many scientists refuse to speak about publicly. Some researchers have noticed that the mysterious DNA fragments found in the Sea Peoples bear subtle genetic similarities to remains recovered from submerged settlements off the coast of the Mediterranean, ancient ruins now lying beneath hundreds of feet of water. These ruins predate known civilizations and show evidence of advanced architecture far beyond their time. If these connections are real, it could mean that the Sea Peoples were not just survivors of Bronze Age collapse, but the last living descendants of a pre-Ice Age maritime civilization, one that could have inspired the enduring legend of Atlantis. Their sudden appearance, their unmatched naval skill, their hybrid culture, it all fits too perfectly. They may have been the inheritors of knowledge lost when the oceans rose, carrying fragments of that forgotten world in their blood, their ships, and their myths. And if that's true, the fall of the Bronze Age wasn't the beginning of chaos. It was the final echo of something far older. A civilization humanity is only now beginning to rediscover. So who were the Sea Peoples, really? Warriors, refugees, survivors? Or the last descendants of a forgotten world? Science has given us a glimpse, not a full answer, but a door. A door into a chapter of human history written not in stone or script, but in blood. And now that door is open, one question remains. What else is buried beneath the seas, waiting to remind us who we really are and where we truly came from? Because if the DNA of the Sea Peoples is anything to go by, the story of humanity is far older, far stranger, and far more connected than anyone ever imagined.